Okay. Wow, where does the time go? It's we're sorry we're late. Sorry we're late if you're joining. I gotta get a pencil hairdo going. Ah uh, yeah. Stationary store bonus. It's we're sorry. Nice. Okay, that feels better. Paul. Yes. Good morning. It's Monday. Great to be back. Uh it's Monday. It's like, I don't know, the eleventh. Yep, we're in right? like second week of May here, mm -hmm. barreling on through. We are um, just a week short of our two month mark of closed. Is that right? Next I'll Monday will be it. When did we launch the show? It was well, late March, right? It was later. It was later yeah. than the store closed. So um, I'm just trying to keep up with the time passage because <laughs> I did notice that as I stopped thinking to myself constantly, like, oh, the store's been closed two weeks now, three weeks now. Um, it feels like everything's happening very fast, but we've actually been in this stasis for what's going on kind of a hot minute. That's true. I mean, I think in the future, nobody's ever going to be like, wow, I can't believe they were closed for six weeks. It seems like, what's the big deal? We can be closed. No big yeah, deal. Yeah, we can be closed for it's six It's a weeks. global pandemic, once in a century sort of deal. So yeah. like, we're just taking it as we go. Aren't we lucky that we get to live through these historic I'm, times? It's fine. You know, like, hey. I think it's good to shake things up every once no, in a while. No, there's I I <laughs> reject your hot take. <laughs> Nothing's good about this situation except that some scientists and researchers will have opportunities to study things in a whole new way. Yeah, but, there's that. Uh, you know what? Is chaos and bad feelings like ever really worth the cost? I mean, sure, but it's you know that goes with the territory sometimes. Well, we don't mean to get so philosophical on y'all because we are Starting a home shopping weird. network. And last time I checked, QVC never asked their viewers to deeply contemplate <laughs> the meaning of the life they're currently living. They only want to share with you products you can buy. And that's why that's why life. people come to Wonder Fair Home Shopping Network and instead of QVC. Because we bum you out. <laughs> <laughs> no. But for this beautiful beast here. He's so beautiful. Who is taking up most of the YouTube screen Sorry right about now? It. He searches for more treats, but there are none. Oh he ate no! Them all. He's depleted all of his resources. I will say it's been a while since we've done uh, like Dave feeding video, mm -hmm. but um, at least once a day I'll do his sort of um, goalie training. Mm -hmm. Maybe I gotta film this because he is getting just tremendously better and better with his um, hockey stops batting down treats as they attempt to fly yeah. by. Um, yeah. So maybe we'll get, get back on a, an Instagram live and, and try and. Mm -hmm. His athleticism is definitely increasing in so many ways. Oh, do you want to so talk about metrics. what happened last week? Did I not already? I believe Did we talk I discussed about it? it. Oh, Dave I discussed the... it with our staff Zoom. Mm. No, yeah. Last Friday, folks. <sighs> You Dave, might want to, it was Dave's a stuff. bad boy. Well, he Dave reacting on his feline instincts mm. as we so it's very cute. Here's how Wonder Fair gets home now that we commute with Dave. Uh, he likes to just kind of prowl the back seat, which ideally with his sort of lead leash on, so he can't go flinging about too much. But um, when we get to our house, I open the passenger door and he comes out from the back seat. And I let him loose and he starts to stalk the yard for tasty grass treats. But Friday, he behaved unusually when we landed. He started to kind of belly crawl along the grass like he had like an itchy belly. And I thought he was just being coy with me. But he somehow instinctively knew there was an animal in this bush. So in the matter of less than a second, he darted into the bush. A quick scramble occurred. He left the bush within moments with a baby bunny in his jaws. He was just like in and out with the bunny, zoomed to our house door as if to take the bunny to his secret snack place. And uh, I was able to have him drop the bunny, which seemed none the worse for wear. Bunny scrambled away. Dave meowed at us sadly from the door as we trapped him inside, trying to find and ensure the bunny's safety. I made that it story was, too long. It was attempted bunny murder by our dear Dave. And um, gotta say, we don't tolerate that 
-hmm. baby bunnies are very cute. We They're can't so have cute. our cat murdering them. No, no cat murder. So. I feel badly. I know now that the leash has to stay in my grasp as we, <laughs> he's such a good cat who doesn't run away. We don't really worry anymore about him not being like held by us on the leash. I'm he won't run into traffic, but he will apparently run to bunny murder. I so. want to I want to give Dave a little bit of the benefit of the doubt and maybe hope that he just wanted to bring the bunny inside to play with the bunny in a non-murderous way. But we don't we don't know for sure. Bunny was in his mouth. Could have been Dave thinking it's snack time. Yeah, but Dave didn't like crush the bunny's head. He just gently not like gummed the bunny's cute bunny back mm -hmm. there were so, no visible wounds from the distance we could see yep yeah. bunny hopped away seemed okay um so that that's the that's the day update <laughs> bad boy um bad owners do we sh i could have i'll keep them more constrained now he okay. gets snuggled all the way to the car okay <laughs> what a punishment yeah um, I made that story so long. I'm like, that's okay. We're not good at concision. As we're gonna we're gonna power through the news. We got one question coming in through YouTube, so Great. we'll get to that in a, in just a minute. Um, let's let's talk. What's what's the local food scene going on? Well, I believe that more restaurants are coming online, as it were. Uh, I know mm -hmm. the Roost is starting to offer breakfasts to go. Mm -hmm. Heard that they ran clean out. Wow, that's great. Mother's Day breakfast is a whole mood. Good. So I'm not surprised to hear that and I'm excited and happy for them. And um, I think that's the only update I know about, except that um, you'll probably repeat things that the people- Well, I saw I saw Brad from Taco Zone mm -hmm. at, um, at Love Garden the other day. Love Garden doing appointment shopping. So if you wanna, Get some records. I had an order to pick up, so I was in the shop briefly. Saw Brad there shopping for records. Tried to get the inside scoop on Taco Zone. No dice. Brad says we're working on it. It sounds like they're not. You know, I was like, can you give me anything? Can you give me like, are there going to be new recipes? Are you doing any of that stuff? He's like, nope, I got nothing. I want to officially move that we stop putting the pressure on those poor folks and just lay <laughs> off the tacos and there's so um, many great things you can also eat. I, I will say I also clarified that um the injury was not uh, a really bad injury right. a kayak injury to their chef um it was a knee thing uh or something I right. think so Next. Next. <laughs> I have so much to share today. Okay, gotta, okay, okay, okay. Okay. Um, uh, here's a report from the Instagram comments. Great. 715 working on carry out um, and delivery guidelines. That's awesome. So that is truly exciting. Um, we got I some. I love a guideline. Merchants is back. We got some merchants. I don't know if we mm -hmm. mentioned that. Um, we were. We part, did. We were part of the test run on merchants right yes, soft we launch we participated in the weekend soft launch but that was last that was a weekend. week ago yeah yes. it was last weekend so much time has passed that was long. our first um carry out cocktail too we mm -hmm. got their milk punch talk uh, about it did we talk about we it? we did we sure all right did. i don't know hey did you get it's reset all, it's all blending in did you get, did reset? <laughs> get reset oh no <laughs> um, everybody there's a blanket of mine. Okay. Last week was so busy. I'm not surprised you feel that you were. It was a busy week. It went by in the blink of an eye. We thank you all so much. We had a, I mean, considering the situation, it was a decent week mm. for a store that's closed. Yeah. And we got to deliver wonderful gifts to moms. We got to do four balloon deliveries. Hold that in the frame. Yeah. Whoosh. Just FYI, we are. Um, Still offering this. We've got two more today. Two more uh, balloon deliveries to I do love, today. It's a consistent two a day on um, delivery days. Um, I would like to share with the folks briefly that I watched an episode for the first time. Of our I'm, show? Yeah, I'm kind of embarrassed of watching it because I don't really like to see the goofy things I say that are often wrong. Um, but that's not the way to go about life, folks. So I did watch an entire episode and I will say, I loved hearing the wind sounds Oh. It was very soothing to the point that I would just like listen to us make whooshing sounds the whole hour. So I guess you're welcome if you feel like me. It's so soothing. Um, what else did I have to talk about here? 
Hmm. I don't know. That might be it. Let's answer Elizabeth's question hmm. by YouTube, um, which is, uh, what does the Wonder Fair logo mean? With the hmm. anvil and the diamond? Hmm. Where'd that come from? I'll be... Yeah, let's demonstrate that How's logo that? here. Yeah, I can. we can see this clearly. So uh, four icons in the Wonder Fair logo here. We've got the, um, the fire, the anvil, the mystery lump, and the diamond, right? Um, so uh, Wonder Fair was founded by Eric Dobbins uh, in 2008, a local, local artist. Uh, he now lives out in LA. Um, but he is symbolized by the diamond. Um, and then uh, a couple years into Wonder Fairy brought on a few more collaborators. Um, and those other collaborators are symbolized by these other symbols. And um, when we took over, we never changed the logo. We probably could, could or should have um, dropped in. I just you know. said. Okay. Uh, I always felt like we should never change the logo because the people who started the business are very important to it. Um, it's not like we were doing a total rebrand. No. We were just given the opportunity and the great fortune of carrying on Wonder Fair's legacy and even making it sort of like finding a way to make it sustainable, uh, which I feel like we've done. And um, still, you mean, I mean, it's a good, it's a good logo. Yeah. It's meaningful to the history of the brand. If every brand like threw out their historic logos every time someone new came along, like you wouldn't have cool well, historic logos. Sure. Enjoy. Well, I will say that there are other symbols that we use in our secondary logo might might be considered this little flag, uh, mm -hmm. flag pin. Which is also by Eric. Also by Eric. Um, we have variations on the logo that have arisen over the years and we'll keep doing that. But the standard logo is always gonna be there because this day and age, it feels kind of, and this is a lot of hubris, so I apologize. Um, it feels important that we've lasted over 10 years. We're going on, what, 13 now? 13? Yeah, Just so. Hit. Wait. So people are constantly uh, um, surprised and confused that we have survived as a retail <laughs> store. That's kind of weird downtown. So for me, it also feels like, you know, a celebration that we've sustained not just the logo, but our business. So. What I will say about the logo is its shape is a little long. Bad. It's bad for a lot don't of things. I don't like the long shape. But <laughs> it looks it looked cute on bags for years. Yeah, We've been using we... the cat instead for a while. But speaking of logos, is it transition time? Uh, almost. I want to answer a couple more questions then here. Then I'm going to miss my opportunity. Oh, Maybe well... we can work those questions in naturally. Well, okay, we got Sandy that. Squirrel's loan asking um, if they can order online. And I'm happy to report, yes, finally. It sounds like they've been a Wonder fan for a long time. Sandy? Uh, yes, Sandy. Oh. You know Sandy? I mean, it could be Sandy, who's yes. a good friend of Mallory. Yes, who's a former right, Wonder that's Fair Sandy. Staffer, who's married to the artist, Charlie, who they shop oh, with us. Yes. And they have well, a very cute child. Wow. And they're both great artists. Well, if it's that Sandy, could be a hello. Sandy. Yes, we've got a website. Wonderfairhomeshopping.com. Hmm. Thanks for tuning in. Heida Weavers here saying we're a great neighbor. Wow, we feel uh, is so so neighbor. fortunate to be living in the shadow of such an incredible retail legacy right next door. That's um, literal because they're one of the tallest buildings downtown, which we'd tallest. like to keep it that way. Yeah. It's very quaint. And they got that. Speaking of keeping your logo going, Weavers up high. They can't high five <laughs> me, so you should. Weaver's got that big old logo going for like, what, 70, 80 years? What a class years? act. 90 years? Mm -hmm. I don't even know. It's a long time, y'all. Mm -hmm. At least since the 50s. It looks like a classic 50s department store logo, yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will say that my friend Martin, who is tuning in from Sweden and runs a design firm yes, well, in Sweden, does comment, uh, you know, maybe slight evolution <laughs> <laughs> over without, without changing the expression. True. That's, um, you know, if like if we ever were making more products and we were like constrained by it, we would, we do have this, the logo version on our jumpsuits is actually the stamp version that we Stamp version, created. a little sloppier. It's a little like softer edged. It's a little less future horrific. Um, and a good example of, we're a design store. So we can just, this is part of our shopping network is talk about design, right? Yep. 
Uh, Love Garden did what Martin is describing, which is they had a classic logo. They didn't want to change too much, but it was a little bit tight. It was very um, pre-digital in a way. And that was like not looking so great anymore in a vector based world of graphic design printing. So they had an artist, I think Patrick Giroux, but I could be Nick. wrong. Was it Nick, Nick Stahl? Nick recently redid it. Okay. Nick Stahl um, just kind of cleaned it up a little, made it uh, a little more fresh, but you wouldn't actually notice they updated the logo. I don't think if you weren't like really honed yeah. in on them. So there's your local graphic design chat for the great, morning. Great news. I have so <laughs> many products pulled. I can actually transition. This one. Uh, thank you so much for the questions. <laughs> um, and so Sandy's Jake mom, chef, former chef at 715. Oh, um, we do know two Sandys. Yes, we do know two Sandys. Incredible. Um, I feel so proud of myself. That's a good name. Is that Jake's Daily Bread? Yeah. Oh, what Your a bread. Your son makes great bread. What a bread. I miss that bread. I know, right? Whew, I'm going to get that bread as soon as 715 comes back to getting that bread. <laughs> that you know what I'm bread. saying? <laughs> um, hey, that's a design... A lot of designers use the phrase, get that bread to indicate, like, get paid for your work. Mm -hmm. So speaking of graphic design and uh, all of its nuances. There's the segue. I'm here to share with people some great graduation gift ideas that uh, I just wandered around the store for five minutes finding so many options. Turns out our store is very geared toward helping people transition well into different kinds of life. Uh, so graduation, here we come. Um, are you a graphic designer graduating into the world of global pandemic and other feelings? Maybe you need the book, How to Be a Graphic Designer Without Losing Your Soul. This is not like a witchcraft based book. <laughs> this is a book about, um, you know, when you're a graphic designer, you're doing a lot of jobs for hire. It can be very disheartening because you're an artist, but you're also an artist working toward a really specific script. And I have a lot of graphic designer friends who feel um, they often use the phrase like having your soul sucked out of you, especially in corporate jobs. Yeah, it can be a real grind. Yes, we call some of these corporate jobs the velvet handcuffs because mm. your pay is good and benefits are great, but like mm, you're kind of trapped in this sort of hamster wheel of design. So uh, this is a great book to give for someone who might be just beginning that path. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a weird time for everyone graduating now, just like it's a weird time for everyone everywhere doing everything. So here's that backwards. We don't YouTube. have it listed on the website. So if you're interested, we, I think because we have one. We have one copy. <laughs> so this is a great time to be calling in orders for for local pickup. You know, we say I, I want that one book for my graphic design mm -hmm. uh, graduate. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, normally we'd be selling selling those like hotcakes right now to <laughs> we, <laughs> relatives I, of people in the design uh, department. Apologies, because I really snoozed on graduation prep. I like, yeah. because in my mind, I knew KU wasn't graduating and walking down the hill. I just didn't think about people would probably still gift and card people. So it's we have a happen. lot of that. It's still going to happen. Um, we can still help sell all of those things. I'm just like slow to get them on the web, but they'll be there soon. So um, speaking of graphic design and graduates, here's a great gift idea that I just pulled together. All um, right. Perhaps if you're a devoted watcher of the Wonder Fair Home Shopping Network, you'll remember when Paul and I sort of unfairly made jabs at Blackwing's new uh, logo design, because mm. we kind of like the old one. But you know, we're coming around. No, we're not. Mm. But we're, we're into the box. So here's a box of Blackwing Pearl pencils that would make a great gift for any graduate, because you know, you're going to make some mistakes when you set out. You're going to need that big, chunky eraser. Um, I pulled this box specifically, though, because I have two versions of cards for graduates that say the world is your oyster. But I wanted to show off one that doesn't show well online, which is made by um, one of the pop-up card companies we carry. This is by Pure Alchemy. And it's an actual die cut oyster shell that opens up. And then there's a little die cut pearl inside. Oh, wow. Isn't it cute? And it says very tiny inside, the world is your oyster with a little pearl. So pair it with some black wing pearl pencils of the highest quality. The box of pencils is around $27 with the card that'll be the whole gift done for you at 30 bucks, which is pretty choice. If you need to spend a lot less, um, you could certainly just buy a single pearl pencil from us. Just call us to arrange that. So uh, give one or a dozen pencils and the little oyster card. So cute. Um, I should point out that the envelope for this card is also bangerang. 
It's in sort of a mermaid pastel color tone shift with a scalloped edge. Get it? Scallop? Because pearls, I mean, scallops don't have they pearls. Do they do make pearls. Scallops make pearls? Sure do. Jeez Louise. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell me more. Well, a pearl is usually like a little grain of sand that gets like trapped in a weird spot and then... Uh, like I, I think it's calcium or some other minerals will like just build up over time. Uh, and, and that's how pearls are made. Um, yes. Uh, uh, hey. Tech update. Yeah. Can you remind me later? I need to get a spotlight on our product showcase spot for Instagram. Cause boy, it's just getting worse and worse. And I will I'm, remind I'm, you. Yeah. We're going to move some lights around tech update. Our first one in a while. We're going to, we're going to get that Instagram product feature really popping for y'all. That's, that's about as all we can do. Hey, uh, observation. When people get like bladder stones or those just people pearls. Yeah. Yeah. People pearls. Damn. Yeah. Try and save them. If we you should can. be spinning it like that. That makes, I mean, I know it's painful. Oh shit. Do you think a pearl painful? Oh, to pass a pearl. No, no, not for, oh, for, not a, for a person, for, for a, a clam, for a clam, for an oyster. Oh my god! It could be. I kind of feel bad for them. We should get I there. I don't know. I don't know what there. kind of pain uh, shellfish feel. Mm, it's probably. I mean, they're all muscle, so probably a lot. Mm -hmm. Muscle pain's bad. <sighs> I'm um, feeling a lot of feelings right now about scallop pearls. Shout and out people pearls. Shout out in the comments to Kara, who mm. says she she'd like to call call in and mm. talk watercolor brushes. You um, bet. Wants to talk to Paul or Mimi, so she's waiting until the broadcast is over to make that call. That's great. That's a classy That's move. Classy move, Kara. Classy Everybody move. knows this is live. Phone's right here, so if you call, we got to answer. Yeah. Um, I know like this much about watercolor brushes. That's mostly related to what the brush is made out of. Um, you've got like your squirrel hairs, it's so fancy. But then it's like white taclon, golden taclon, natural fiber. What's the best? It all depends on how you paint. So we can go over those things. I could also research it for one day and do a whole episode about it on wow. Tubular Tuesday. Should brushes are fairly tubular. I can't believe brushes are made from squirrel hair. Yep. Uh, Is maybe, that normal? Maybe. Hey, Kara, we can still talk one-on-one, <laughs> -on -one, but I think I might talk about brushes tomorrow. I love an opportunity to – I need to do the learning anyway. There's an endless amount of things I can learn about art materials, so – and I just ordered brushes today, so that's on un that's unrelated. I have stuff to show. I gotta hurry up. Okay, let's. That let's was keep my on moving. um. The world is your oyster gift set number one. But Paul, because you love clams and come from a clam community, yeah, of um Italian Great. immigrants to Cape Cod, it was a whole thing for y'all. Or is it just your family? Uh, it's not just my family. A lot of Italian Im immigrants just love free food. And so there even if it's a bunch of chewy cohogs, they're out there picking clams on the weekend, yep. trying to get some free food out of the ocean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Respect. So, uh, I think as a result, we do have a lot of like clam themed stuff in our Kansas based store, which is unusual perhaps, but I can't honestly resist an oyster card because they make me think of you. So um, I have another The World is Your Oyster gift set option. This is the second The World is Your Oyster card, a classic from Rifle Paper. We've sold this one for years, maybe as many years as we've carried Rifle Paper, which is like 11 at this point. Um, I know, right? We it, started around the same time. I know, They started right? their business one year before us. I think. Wow. Maybe the same year, something like that. Anyway, um, I paired it with this very beautiful leather The World uh, notebook. It's natural leather, so no no for vegans. Um, it's got a nice strap. You can actually see like there's age on the leather where the strap has been, which I kind of like. Some people may not, but that's just what happens mm -hmm. with natural stuff in sunlight. We're all aging under the sun, folks. Fact of life. Um, unless you never leave your house again, which that might be anyway could be. we'll ship to your house this beautiful <laughs> world planner so if you miss it not a problem um your graduate probably can't go on their walkabout as they might have done before their grand tour so give it to them in a planner or journal form it's going to be lined pages they're all fountain pen friendly it lays extremely flat compared to many planners because it has a bunch of sewn signatures it's not just one big cheap book this is a well-made uh, product. This, this is, is a like professional an bookmaker sort it of deal. Is. Yep. This is an heirloom sort of uh, notebook for somebody uh, that pairs so nicely with that card. 
And if you want to kick it up a further notch, like maybe this is a graduate who's like getting their master's. This is a big deal gift. Add a fountain pen, take it all the way up to 21. Oh, That's yeah. 11 plus 10. Plus 10. Mm -hmm. Big rolls on that. I've paired it just for funsies with the pen I think looked prettiest with it, which is one of my favorites. Um, this is a pilot. I'm going to get the name exactly right. E95S. I would have left the S out. I have it in fine here to show you. Um, Rot row. I keep going. So E95S plus very beautiful leather journal, pretty together. Or you can buy them separate. I like the E95S because amongst fountain pens, Pilot's a great brand anyway. But in this case, the E95S is very diminutive. You can see once you uncap it, it's like pretty tidy and tiny. It posts like this. And then you have a full length pen, but it's short enough to fit inside your shirt pocket. And that's kind of what it's designed for. I don't have a shirt pocket, but I can show you in my sleeve is it's short enough to not stick out of a standard size pocket. So that makes it a great like carry to work pen. Um, and it's not gonna leak all over your pocket because when it's capped that a pin is upright in your pocket. So uh, great design, beautiful pen. We have it usually in a couple of colorways. Uh, this is the more graduate one. I think it's black and gold, but we also have it in a really pretty burgundy and champagne color. Uh, that's one of my favorite pins. I don't own one yet, only because I'm trying not to be fancier than I am. And I have two fancy pins. So I cut myself off. I guess I technically own that one in sort of a like business way. So that's a sexy little number. That's not to say you couldn't give it for someone you have purely platonic feelings for, um, or for someone who you're just really proud of. I just gotta say that the slide on this it's it, there's so there's nice. no way to communicate this through uh, through any sort of visual or um, or sound. Uh, so, so you're soft. just going to have to take my word that I'm feeling this pen, the cover slide maybe, maybe off can. and on, and it's just so smooth. Uh, there's a little bit of resistance there mm -hmm. where you know you're you're doing something. You know what I think this probably feels like? This is probably the feeling people have when they put the plutonium core in the nuclear reactor. It's like, <laughs> it, you're not scared though, because it's just happening very smoothly and naturally, but like there's resistance all around, but it's so soft mm -hmm. and guided. And it just feels like they're they're made to be together. And that's that's probably part of why this is a $160 pen. It's a fancy pen. Folks. It's a fancy pen. I was not, I was being real about how this is a very big This is the blow the wallet gift. Yeah. graduation gift. Or this is the like, get your whole family together to give people one big one gift one instead of a bunch of little pieces of junk. Um, okay, extremely fancy graduation gift. That was my, the world is your oyster segment. I can't believe I let the Paul answer the phone twice in a row. Yeah. Leaving me alone. Sure, I did that to myself. Oh, he's just going to take their number. I can carry on. I'm not. I'm fine. Okay. World is your oyster. Moving right along. Oh, man. Where to go next? I have so many graduation gifts prepared. Well, we've talked about fountain pens. So what if I show one more fountain pen? Um, I think pens are a very classic gift for a graduate. They have kind of a professional air. They're going to be certainly useful. They're very small and easy to pack and move around. So there's a lot of reasons to give a fountain pen as a gift. So uh, if there's someone in your life graduating with a science degree, Ooh, or if, you know what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you do. There's still going to have to be a science degree, but I like, I like it thematic, as you've learned. So I pulled... Um, for the pen portion, this is one of our mini Twisby Ecos. It's in its box. So you can't see it. That was a tactical error. Ooh. I should have brought an actual logo. Pen. I can fish this out of the box while you're going. Okay. Thanks. Um, okay. I pulled a 1.1 stub nib Twisby, but in retrospect, maybe you want to give not a stub nib, but a standard like finer medium for note taking. Uh, those pins to me have a very um, scientific look to them. They have a clear body and a piston. So they're always filled from bottles of ink, not cartridges. 
um, but they're still very affordable compared to a lot of piston based pins. They're only $28, $30. The prices are going up, by the way. We haven't raised ours because we bought our stock when they were still more affordable. Oh, yeah, I was just going to raise them. <laughs> we might have to. They do have very strident yeah. rules. You are not allowed to discount Twisbees um, or they'll close your account. So we'll look into that and make sure we're doing it correctly. Um, anyway, so uh, what I was going to say is maybe you do want the stud in because yeah. A, they're not taking notes anymore, they've graduated. Yeah. And instead, nothing more to learn. They just want that big, juicy signature that they're going to put on all those big paychecks they're yeah. cashing. So mm -hmm. maybe you do want that stub nib. That's my favorite to sign my name I, with. I do prefer a stub nib personally, too. Just like this. It's fine. Yikes. Look at the quality on this. this just drop it, drop it all day long. No uh, problem. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, that one's for Paul. Um, I'm pairing it with one of our more. Um, scientifically both packaged and I think derived fountain pen ink companies is Colorverse. Colorverse is based out of Korea and a lot of their inks are based on ideas about ast astronomy. So this is a string theory based set. It comes with two colors of ink. One is called string and it's a beautiful ochre color. And the other color included in the box is brain and straight up, I don't know what that means. Paul, science guy, take it away. So, uh, brain. Yeah, I don't know. That, oh, is, dang. Well, that is like probably, uh, you know, from the illustration, it looks like some sort of um, like multi dimensional uh, concept here. Hmm. Um, well, looks like we all got some learning to do. Yeah. So maybe you, know, you do still need to be taking notes. And um, Colorverse inks always come with a larger bottle of ink that you maybe use your desk ink, and then a smaller bottle that's so cute, kind of a tester even, or a travel bottle. And in many cases, the pair will have a standard ink, non-shimmering, and the smaller ink bottle is a sh glimmery, shimmery ink. And that's the case with String and Brain. Brain is a sparkly sage color. I've never seen it, but I bet it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is actually one of my favorite just color combos as well as being um, sciencey and cute, and what a great gift for someone who's um, graduating with a degree in physics or basically, I mean, string theory is and involved with everything. I mean, you don't have to go down the string theory route. We have a few other um, mm -hmm. great inks by this brand. So if you tell us, hey, it's chemistry or it's physics or whatever, we can kind of work with you on okay. that. Or you just settle for the the color instead of the concept. Right. But we like the concept. We got the I don't know. The, I what, got the Schrodinger. The Schrodinger cat, cat, cat one, yeah. Uh, or actually, like, I like the Schrodinger cat one because you don't know what's in the box. It comes in a box, guys, and you don't know is it in there or is it not. That would have been a fun concept if they'd actually explored it, but they did not. Um, we also own Warped Passages and Extra Dimensional, which are two yeah. beautiful inks that I'm currently using in my pins, and I'm really liking the ink. It's a good quality ink. Um, but you know what? I think Colorverse's claim to fame is going to be their incredible packaging. It's so beautiful inside of there. And if you love the materiality of pens, which otherwise you're probably not interested in fountain pens. So that's all of us. Um, I think they understand that about pen people and they really give it to you. Yeah. They're like, wham, bam, the bottle's cool. I love this brand. It's easy to <laughs> refill the pens because they have a pointed end, just like a Pilot Hiroshi Zuku bottle. So you can really get down to that last drop of ink too. Yeah. Um, wow, I really bored a bunch of people about pins just now. Sorry no, about folks it. are loving it. We've got some fact checks coming in. Oh, so good. I'd like to what offer some clarifications. Brain? Thanks to Kate Meyer, our fact checker, main fact checker anyway. Um, although our normal science fact checker, Ryan Shank, probably would have had that quickly. He doesn't seem to be tuning in today. But Kate says brain is an extended object with any given number of dimensions of which strings and string theory are examples with one dimension. So uh, it is oh. some sort of like multi-dimensional sort so of thing So in the Venn diagram, on. string is fully within brain? Uh, I think so, okay. yes. It string looks like, is a brain. It looks like in this diagram, they're showing several strings within brain. Wow, um, so maybe if you're just really into like multiverse comic books, this is the set for you. Three, Kate says our universe is three brain, which I believe it would be three dimensions. Um, so we've got we've got three. Are there more? Wow. That's what physics is trying to learn. Um, uh, also, gotta uh, offer a clarification. Jeff 
fortunately is not the former chef at 715, is the current executive chef. And when I saw Ooh. X, I translated that as former, but not executive. And it, Jake ah. is indeed still the executive chef. Thank goodness, because if we couldn't get the bread, I was gonna be bummed out. But um, you know, it's a weird time in the restaurant here, biz. Pick out this, so, tell people about this great book they could give if you'd like. Okay. A, um, Shout out to Jake. <laughs> Please get back on the bread train. Um, all right, Meredith answers the call at the door. Um, so I'm gonna offer up, uh, you know, we showed some of Adam's work uh, here on the show just a few days ago, but this is a new um, book from Adam Gennady, local writer. Um, it's, a, um, it's a novel. Uh, the other stuff we were showing was more like in his, self-help uh zone it's the uh diy guide to fighting the big motherfucking sad um and so uh this is adam's news novel just came out a few weeks ago a few months ago february um so kind of a tough time for authors to be releasing new material i'm sure he had a lot of travel plans that have been disrupted um, but adam and his wife elizabeth they're just moving to lawrence fresh fresh lawrence citizens uh along with their um their rescue farm for uh rescued animals they Moving got cute goats yes they goats got and cats, cats and... maybe like a i think they got pig. pigs a pig, pig several pig. pigs yeah. um uh so uh what did you want to say about this book here? i just think it would be a great i i think people often give books nonfiction, fiction uh Adam's writing is really accessible, but emotional, and it's easy to connect with it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, like graduation can also be very stressful, especially yeah. if you start looking for jobs or like applying for schools feels like it's gonna be weird too, because we don't know what the fall will bring. So I think this book would just be a good companion for someone going through a big change. I'm gonna offer, I haven't read this yet. I have read some, some of Adam's other works, which frequently speaks to like, trying to find your place in the world as a 20 something. Mm -hmm. Um, and this one, I just want to read the the lead on it because it's really speaking to me. Adam Gennady's third novel is held up by a Springsteenian sense of hope and a desire for redemption of finding glory and escape, friendship and love in hard times. Yo. Um, I'll, I'll do anything that's Springsteenian. You will. <laughs> Sign me up. Awesome. <laughs> um, okay. I just think that would be a great gift. I don't know if we have it online yet. I um, don't think so. You have some of I'd Adam's other say, stuff. It'd be very easy to order direct from Adam, and I'd probably just recommend people do that <laughs> too because he's a great guy and he lives so close to us. Why not? Yep. Help but if you want to pick it up at the store, order it from us. That's easier. That is to, easy uh, for him to deal with because they got they got them. I mean, everybody's got a lot. They're going trying on. to move in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I guess I'll start going down the pathway of books to give graduates how oh, do you feel about it great Paul? yes um next up i think i'll pull i mean i just really i got a lot of options we got a lot of options you really did a big old grab here i mean what graduate doesn't need to read this title paul tell it to the people for futures subtitle is uh life after capitalism uh <laughs> we've had this for years but it's feeling more timely always all the time always yeah, always thinking about what are some of our alternatives mm -hmm. to this system we have now? Because now's the time to be exploring that, right? I mean, mm -hmm. everything around us has changed. Mm -hmm. And so why not try and carve out some new pathways? Right. Um, four Futures looks at uh, four different um, potential pathways to that. I'll say, uh, I'll, I'll give you the quick, quick overview here, you know, uh, the four main futures we're talking about here, communism, equality and abundance, rentism, hierarchy and abundance, socialism, equality and scarcity, or exterminism, hierarchy and scarcity. Some of those sounded scary. Sounds intense. Um, it sounds very intense. You know what? World's scary. Let them know. Have them read a book about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, they're not gonna read it on the internet because uh, I don't wanna go down that path too dark. Uh, so a book like this, I feel like you could simply give the book and a great card um, or pair it with a small artwork. Uh, we definitely sell a lot of artwork at graduation time. It's kind of hard to buy art right now because we don't have our full selection online, but we do have some of our smaller prints on, like I'm showing here and you cannot absolutely read it, but go read it on our website. Okay. Uh-huh. 
This is um, a Grace D. Chin print. She's one of our BFFs. And it's an Audre Lorde quote, Audre Lorde being one of the most important philosophers and writers of our era. Uh, this quote, it's so long and I've read it before. Should I go for it? Yeah. You can never hear too much Audre Lorde, folks. Let's do it. Uh, this quote says, in the midst of this sort of night sky with a large looming orb, I want to live the rest of my life, however long or short, with as much sweetness as I can decently manage, loving all the people I love and doing as much as I can of the work I still have to do. I'm going to write fire until it comes out of my ears, my eyes, my nose holes, everywhere until it's every breath I breathe. I'm going to go out like a fucking meteor. So I feel like why not combo those two, this sentiment that you've got work to do and you've got to do it with fire uh, with some options for seeing the future. Um, also, how often do you get an, a beautiful art print with the word nose holes on it? Nose holes. Don't uh, see it too much in print. You know, I feel like a lot of writers, they take themselves seriously in a way that they would never like be that visceral and honest about your disgusting body and the work it has to do. But Audre Lorde brings it to you straight. Like you, even your nose holes need to be engaged in the yeah. fight for uh, equality. That's my, that's my commentary about Audre Lorde. It's not as good as everyone else's. You should just read about <laughs> them online. Okay, so... um. Great prints from Grace. Maybe you also want to do this um, Pierre K. Abbott quote, which is actually a variation and maybe a translation, but that's who it's attributed to. Uh, this one says, do not be daunted by the enormity of the world's grief. Do justly now, love mercy now, walk humbly now. You are not obligated to complete the work, but neither are you free to abandon it. Yo, graduates, this is like, put it on your mortar board, you know what I'm saying? Just right on the grad cap. Because uh, this is probably what people are thinking. It's a lot of pressure, but it's okay. We're all, we can all do it. Love this print. Uh, it's only $15 for the print, so it makes a great and affordable gift. But you can also buy it in a nice sticker form. Uh, that's only $4. And then they can just slap that right on their diploma. Because, I don't know. Guess they're not getting their diploma for a while, probably. But it'll come in the mail, folks. That's how they do it. Comes it comes in the mail, yeah. All right. And, and then, then you it'll can go frame and shoot. It. Oh. You can frame it, get a fancy frame, and then put it in a closet for like the next 40 years. I did that. Mine's yeah. a shoebox. I never got a frame for it. You never got a frame. I See, my mom, my mom got, got it framed, mm. and it's in the attic. It's in our attic. But until recently, it was surely in a closet oh or the God. basement. Um, okay. <laughs> so we've been pretty serious for a minute, but maybe you don't want to give a serious gift to your graduate in your life. Maybe you just want to keep it goofy, keep it light. Unshark and believable. You graduated. Yeah, unshark and believable. You got these graduation part. cards up yet? I have What? You missed the part of the show where I'm like, y'all, I apologize. I'm oh, working okay. on it. Yeah, we're I working on it. Privileged day by day. Ordering art supplies today. Hey, we needed to get an order in. Mm -hmm. so, so, you know, we're just a little skeleton crew knocking our bones around over here, and they just <laughs> can't clickety clack quite as much as our full on site staff. Could yep. have done, but we'll get through it every day. We'll be unshark more. and believable. Unshark and believable. I love this one so much. You need a graduation uh, card right now. We got a photo. We can text you of a bunch of faves, and you just um, tell us which one you like. Yeah. You otherwise, we're gonna have a bunch of these online in the next couple of days. Um. So I just wanted to lighten the mood. Plus, if I ran out of time, that card's so important to me. I got to get that sure unshark and believable. Um. Because you know, there. graduates are not just uh, college graduates. There's like middle school graduation the thing, high school graduation, people might be graduating from some other kind of certificate program. All that stuff's still happening. It's happening on Zoom, which I hear is wild. They're doing Zoom graduations? They're doing Zoom graduations. Or parties? I believe Just it's like, graduation. I don't understand Maybe why you Zoom to broadcast a big event. But we can talk about that later, though. No, Tech it's, update. Like, it's like a speech giver, like the valedictorians on the Zoom screen. Yeah, but like, the whole blah, idea blah, is blah. like it's a meeting. It's not a meeting. It's like a broadcast well i think all their yeah, little anyway. brady bunch faces are there watching the speaker like hundreds of people i don't know y'all who even knows let us know if you've, you've gone to a zoom graduation we want to know yes. how that tech works how is it working we don't need to know we're just curious <laughs> um curiosity is important um perhaps you'd like to give a graduate this beautiful very large 
very serious. That's how you know it's a graduation gift, y'all, because the book's heavy big, and heavy. big. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a book called Great Thinkers that has a lot of, um, it goes through philosophers through time, I will say. It's kind of why and duty, because that's sort of how Western culture developed the canon. And for better or worse, some of those guys had nice things to say that were good and worth preserving. I'm sure they got a lot of, of I'm sure they got a lot of unheralded folks in here too, folks who were overlooked in their I time. want to say I don't believe Alain de Bouton and the School of Life is very good about um, incorporating more voices into the canon. Oh, okay. They often do rest on like these I mean Alain de Bouton's a famous philosopher, him or themselves, but uh that's just the something I'd point out. I think that our staff member Tyler once pointed that out to me and so i kept an eye out for it and i i have felt that way all right that's not their project i mean they're sort of intersectionally feminist in that they're trying to make the world a better place but they're not necessarily doing it like their main weapon is not canon fixing i'm checking for gender parity and like for most of the modern stuff we've got it but for mm -hmm. like the philosophy side of things there's no female philosophy. that's the thing here. you can't fix the canon yeah in retro, you have to do it now, which is why incorporating more diverse voices at every opportunity is so important. So people in a hundred years from now going through a pandemic sitting in their home shopping network don't have to be like, well, that's just how it has to be because no one let any women publish mm -hmm. or any people of color, especially black and indigenous people of color. Anyway, whoops, the soapbox. How'd I get here? Soapbox is back. I didn't even notice. It just slid right under there. Kate Meyer, our fact checker, makes a good point that in a year of chaos, no way do you have to give a graduation gift on the same weekend as graduation. Mm -hmm. I think wedding rules apply. Get it to them within the year. Yeah, I agree with that. Get it to them within the year mm -hmm. and you're good. So start start using this program today. Foment some ideas. Um, I like the could use be the word book. foment. I'm, I'm trying to work rebellious. it into the daily conversation here. Absolutely. Just like, well, get if you're trying to foment. not just for... Uh, writing, you can use it in daily speech. So if the student in your in question is a little more, like Great Thinkers is a beautiful book. I think it's also kind of neutral in the good way, um, if you don't really know their vibe. But if you sort of know which way they're leaning, why not buy Robert Reich's The Common Good? And yes. give those kids a basis in fame, understanding economy. Fame Secretary of Labor, Robert Reich. He's he a great writer. He's a great writer. He didn't do everything right, folks. We don't no. want to pretend he's some kind of paragon of virtue. No one is. But this book is a good sort of like accessible way to learn about the economy and structuring equality through uh, like large structures. And yeah, it's learning uh, in, in a lot of ways. This is not anything new to the United States. It's a lot of things that we have overlooked. And I think right now we're really looking out for the common good. That's the whole idea of you know, staying mm -hmm. home is looking out for right. the common good. So hopefully there's a renewed interest in that. Robert Reich writing about a lot of the things we've lost over the last 40 years in this shift towards American individualism. Mm -hmm. So a uh, great book for a graduate. I got it from my mom a year or two ago. Um, she loves it. Cool. Um, well, that book is red, white, and blue. And uh, the soapbox has timed out. So this is a gift that's red, white, and blue. Not because America, but because KU. Uh, yeah, we're based in Lawrence, Kansas, which is the home of the University of Kansas Jayhawks. You may have heard of us from such programs as basketball TV. And I think our debate team is good. And famously, our football program's not as good, but it's kind of like funny bad. People are going to be grouching when they say know. that, but I'll be honest to you people. I don't really know. So you can correct me. I'm probably wrong. Maybe we're excellent. Uh, I think we're pretty good at bait, basketball, baseball, baseball, and basketball. We're good at sports, but also have um, a lot of great uh, programs, especially like education, I think is good here. Business is strong, um, social advocacy, social work. So I've said too much about KU that I don't understand, despite having gotten my master's degree there. So this is a Loic term notebook from their Bauhaus edition that happens to have had a blue edge painting and red cover and in very fine print in this hole, it has a small white dot and said, everything starts from a dot. It's then a dot grid notebook inside. So couldn't really get more alma mater than that for a KU graduate. Uh, I've paired it in this gift set, which is called Alma Daughter. 
pretty good pun, with a uh, matching royal blue Lamy fountain pen in fine and a set of blue black ink cartridges. And just to kind of round it out and really drive that uh, alma mater idea home, whoops, <laughs> one of Patrick Drew's illustrated Lawrence postcards, which features the Jayhawk prominently, and other um, small, uh, what do you call them? Sites? Landmark. Buildings, landmarks. It's the landmarks of around town. We also sell this basic design in a larger print version that makes a great graduation gift. I'll probably share it later this week. So that Alma Daughter gift set, I believe is already online. I only have one left. So you might wanna hop on the good foot. If you would like to buy that for a KU graduate, it will come wrapped and ready to gift. So you can get right on it. Woo! Woo woo. I got too much stuff here. What's my timeline? We've got, um, you know, five, six minutes left. Okay, do we have any questions? Uh, no questions okay. currently. In that case, I will do another segment of graduation gifts perhaps later in the week. Um, Cause indeed there's ever so many here. We got it. Yeah, I think we'll probably be featuring quite a handful of graduation. Mm -hmm. Is it this weekend? It's like, there's so many ones. You can't okay, pick yeah. one. Okay. People will be graduating all the time in May. It's a big thing for May. All right. So um, I had a person purchase this book through our online site. Um, and I got to gift wrap it and ship it. And it was a very beautiful gift. I was happy to wrap and ship it. Um, and once I realized it was a graduation gift upon wrapping it, I thought to myself, this person's a genius and has come up with the funniest and most appropriate graduation gift we sell. Yeah, it's true. When you graduate, especially from high school, you will probably be receiving a dictionary that you will never use. I just got rid of mine. I I remember, yeah. yeah. I think I kept mine because it has some nostalgic appeal more related to my family than like the fact that it's a, I've never opened it. Yeah, I, there could be a hundred dollar bill in there and I wouldn't know. <laughs> I probably should check. Oh, wow. Um, Imagine trying to find it in a dictionary. Dang. Jeez. It would probably be under. Nope. Yeah. But there's a lot of options. Anyway, we sell a dictionary. We sell a dictionary that's actually useful because in the age of internet, in Google folks, you just don't need a book dictionary. I apologize really. for those of you who need one. And I totally respect that. You're trying to stay offline and I get it. Oh, but I did get that Oxford English one at an estate sale for $15 and I feel good about it, even though I probably won't ever use it. Absolutely, it could work as a coffee table. So um, we have a dictionary in stock. It is the School of Life Dictionary, a language of emotional intelligence. And it's a literal dictionary with, um, it doesn't go through every word that exists, but it goes through a lot of feelings and um, just things you may come across and not have the language of emotional intelligence to work through or to talk with someone about. So get it in dictionary form. It's the best dictionary you can get as a graduate. Absolutely. Here's a section, for example, on artistic consolation. I don't know what that's gonna be and I'm excited to read mm -hmm. about it. Cause just like learning a new word can help you understand a concept you never fully realized, but like putting a word to something makes it more real and makes you better able to work it into your framework of life. When I read this, I bet I'm going to understand something better about how art consoles me and makes me feel good. And I'm excited to learn about myself through this dictionary, the uh, language of emotional intelligence. We maybe have three left right mm, now. Okay. Um, so not a ton, but they're already online. And I think uh, if you want to do a little twist on the classic gift of a dictionary to a graduate, bam. Also, you gotta got to mention, it's probably not coming through here, but it's beautifully like cloth bound mm -hmm. and covered. Um, embossing on the cloth there. Yep, got to fix my Instagram cam here. But mm. Hard to see. Um, and it is sectioned out by by letter here, like a dictionary would. I'll just um, dance in the background for you too. Yeah. Anyway, it's a lovely little volume. Mm. Uh, and not too spendy either for a very nice book. Probably around the price of a dictionary. Oh, I think some of those fancy dictionaries cost like a hundred bucks. That's true. You know, um, that's a real winner. Good, good choice this right? year. I'm so thankful to the, oof, he's just really blocked. Um, so that's it. I have so many more things, but I'm not going to show them. <gasps> oh no. Oh no. He got the phone again. 
curses. Well, I have no idea how much time is left. Um, I feel in my heart that I have like only two minutes. Um, so I hope, oh good, Lisa says it's okay that we soapbox along with broadcast. So thanks Lisa, we only need one person to say it's okay and we'll just keep doing it. So sorry to everyone else. Um, we cannot emotionally accept your criticisms at this time because we're just scraping by folks, just see the pants here, trying our best, uh, hopefully learning all the time, like we're gonna improve that spotlight for you. So that's gonna be nice for the future. Let's do one last gift, left gift. Well, gift. I've got a great news update to share. <gasps> what is it? Was that Taco Zone calling? <laughs> it was not, okay. it was 7.15. Oh shit, They're testing. They're testing a batch of their to-go cocktails on us. So really reaping the rewards right now. Yes. So heard it here first, 7.15, working it up. Uh, so hopefully you'll be able to order wow. from them soon. We are glad to be able to, to test some of these. Um, I was like, what can we give you? And they're like, we're good. Oh. Um, but, you know, maybe we'll sneak in some new I pens or something. Cannot wait. They love the Oto Rays. It's yeah, the pin Oto of 715. Um, isn't it nice that we live in a small town and just know, like, I could the name... The pen preferences of downtown business owners? I could owners? name the pin preference of at least four downtown business owners. And that makes me happy. Well, we'll have them on. We'll get them talking about their favorite pens. Could I share one last gift? Yeah, let's share one. We've time? got three minutes. I only have three minutes. So this is the perfect gift to share. Um, I'm sharing it because I really like it as a gift idea. And I think I've shared a lot of really traditional or like, mm, like sort of deep and maybe like, maybe you just want to keep it a little simpler. Or you know, like don't know if your graduates like ready to change the world through philosophy and economy studies. Um, maybe they're uh, just going out into the workforce and you know, they're going to have a really hard time but they need to take care of themselves as well. You want to give them more of a self-care gift, something a little nice, low crush. I love at, for a graduate, especially a design graduate, but I think everyone appreciates good design, this beautiful only $20 screen print uh, that says burn study, not out. It's a candle only burning at one end, folks. And uh, I think that's such a good reminder for folks as they are under the pressure to just like be so productive Maybe that's not what's gonna work for them right now. Maybe the world's not gonna meet that demand. So I think that's a great gift. Uh, they might be moving out on their own. They need to decorate a little, 20 bucks, no big deal. Um, it would be easy to frame. And if you'd like to pair something with it, that was $20. Um, the obvious choice would be a candle, uh, I believe from, well, I'm not gonna say something I'm not sure about because I don't have a fact checking friend. Uh, and he orders this line, Paul does, but this is the Lady Luck Hellcats candle. It actually has a lucky penny attached to it. It smells really great. It's like an amber musty scent. Uh, I would consider all candles unisex, but this one in particular, anybody would enjoy it. Um, it's also a fortune scratch off candle. So you can use that penny to scratch this silver stripe, revealing a fortune to your graduate, which I think is just a fun idea. Um, sometimes thinking that fate is totally up to chance and you have nothing to do with it is a very soothing thought. Uh, we will not soapbox too much about that right now, maybe in a later episode, talk about luck. But uh, sometimes you just need that uh, feeling that you can sit back and relax and let fate decide. So this Lady Luck candle, which smells fantastic, paired with this Burn Steady Not Out print, they look great together. They're so cute. Um, I would love it as a gift. And I'm not, they're already here. They're already here. Hot dang. Look at that. Wow. We are really, Ooh. really lucky. Not only, <laughs> this is like a, a real, um, just, I what's the like, word? Uh, we're, I'm not worthy of this bounty. Not only did we get like 20, almost 20 drinks from 715, <laughs> they ran into somebody from the roost who was sending us pastries. <laughs> so, oh my God, oh my God. wow. We're so um, lucky. We're so oh, lucky. Thank you, um, please go so support sweet. these businesses oh who God. are just dumping <laughs> sidecars and um, That's garden so Rickies sweet. Oh, on us. I'm gonna drink that one for lunch. We gotta sign off, we're out of time. The Instagram's gonna end <laughs> any second. So I thanks for joining us. 
Thanks for joining okay. us at Wonder Fair Home Shopping. Yeah. Give us a call if you uh, need anything. Um, and thanks again. I'm kind of crying here. Like my throat's all closing up with happiness. Ugh, I gotta go. I gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta go. <laughs> Yummy. Thanks, Lawrence. Thanks, Shut up.